Hello friends and welcome back to Broken BJJ. My name's Kenny and today I want to talk a bit about how we measure our progress in Jiu Jitsu. I think this is something that's quite difficult for every white belt uh, because there's such a long period of uh, learning Jiu Jitsu before you're ever really able to make anything happen in a role. Uh, it's just the way that the sport is. Uh, we spend a long time getting smashed before we ever manage to, to make anything work for us. Now my coach told me once a while ago when I asked about this, how would I know if I was getting any better? And he said that usually after about six months of solid training, you should be able to handle an absolute newbie pretty comfortably. Uh, that hasn't really been the case for me, uh, because for most of the time that I have been training Jiu Jitsu, I was working with some quite serious limitations. Uh, the two frozen shoulders particularly made it very difficult to do a lot of things. Uh, my knees, obviously, my hips are still bad, uh, and for a good chunk of 2019, I had a torn meniscus as well. Uh, I have had both my meniscus is repaired uh, since then. I'm still recovering a wee bit, but uh, it did mean that I wasn't really able to, to be at full, to be at 100%. I was still limiting myself. I was still being very careful about how I rolled and still uh, wasn't able to do certain things that I wanted to be able to do, particularly uh, with the knee injury. Being in any sort of top position was difficult because kneeling on that bad knee was a problem. In fact, before I even started training Jiu Jitsu really, uh, I put a question in to Kama Jiu Jitsu uh, and one other YouTube channel that I really enjoy. Uh, and I asked Ryan, what do you do if you just can't do certain moves? Uh, is, there, is there any chance of belt progression? And Ryan, uh, to, to his credit, said, well, in my system, in the Kama Jiu Jitsu system, no, not really. Uh, we have a set syllabus, and if you can't do everything in it, then you don't get promoted. And at first, when I heard that, I was quite disappointed. Um, I worried that maybe there wasn't any point in me doing Jiu Jitsu if I could never actually get promoted, if I could never be anything better than a white belt. But the more I thought about it, the more I realised that that was the wrong attitude to take. Um, as the, the old saying goes, a belt covers two inches of your ass and you've got to cover everything else. And I realised that as long as I was getting fitter, getting stronger, as long as I was learning, as long as I was able to, to do some techniques, then I don't actually think I mind that much if I end up as the only, uh, you know, white belt with 10, 15 years experience. I don't mind being the, that kind of 60 year old white belt that surprises all the, the young newbies because I've got black belt level, you know, everything else. And there's just a few parts of my game that are limited by what my body won't let me do. At the same time, uh, when you live with chronic pain, as I do, uh, particularly in my knees and my hips, uh, there's a there's a big part of the 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 treatment for chronic pain, which is about learning to accept it, learning to to recognise that that's with you all the time, and there really isn't much you can do to make it just disappear. All you can do is accept it, accept your limitations, and then try to work within them. Try to appreciate the good days and uh, try to minimize the bad days, or at least try to, to find the best way you can with coping with them. And that has been a part of my training. Uh, part of what I have had to learn in Jiu Jitsu is when to say, I can't roll today when to say, you know, that I need my training partner to protect a certain part of my body, and when there's a technique that I just can't do, saying, 
I just can't do this and maybe asking the coach if there's another way that I can do it or uh, another technique I can use in the same situation. And of course, very often there is. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu is a, a, a massive, you know, amount of techniques and from virtually every position there are multiple things you can do to get to a more advantageous position to you know look for a submission or to just control your opponent in a way that lets you gain the advantage in that con those bad days and good days still come uh, and i think they still come for everybody and uh, nobody has a, a just a smooth ride all the way from white belt to black belt or even white belt to blue belt uh, there's always going to be days when everybody has a rough day doesn't do brilliantly uh, just can't get going and some days when everything just clicks and everything works and every technique you attempt just you hit it perfectly and everything works beautifully this week I actually had that situation, which is one of the reasons that I, I wanted to talk about this today. And that's, uh, I had one white belt that I rolled with on his very first day in jiu-jitsu class. Now, to be fair, he did have a little bit of wrestling experience. But uh, <laughs> I got stuck underneath him in side control and I just could not escape. Uh, I, I tried and I tried and I tried and I just could not get out from under him. This guy was strong and had pretty good pinning technique and just held me in place. Uh, he even made me submit at the end of the round. Um, I maybe could have held on for the last 10 or 15 seconds and, and survived it, but what's the point? Uh, and then... A couple of days later, I rolled with another white belt, another brand new guy. He had done a bit of no-gi back before uh, the pandemic began. Uh, but this was his first time in a gi, first time uh, rolling with, with someone with any significant amount more experience than him. And I was able to submit him, I think, four times in the round. I was able to sweep him a few times. Uh, I was able to pass his guard. Uh, I, I mounted him, you know, I, I used three or four different submission techniques on him. And I think there's something there uh, from the, the poem If about treating triumph and disaster, treating those two imposters just the same. And I think that's important because, yes, after, you know, six months training, you should be able to... Uh, control somebody with no experience but if that person's bigger than you stronger than you uh, significantly younger than you uh, or if you are dealing with some kind of injury or disability or whatever then there are going to be days when you just can't get it done and that's okay uh, because you know like i said not everybody is going to have a, a clear run from being a, a brand new white belt to getting a, a higher belt. That's just not going to happen. What I did notice this week though, was how much more quickly I've been able to pick techniques up. And I think that might be a better measure of progress for all of us. And especially I think for people who, for whom rolling is more of a challenge, for people who are, you know, older, have disabilities, have injuries, have whatever that's, that's limiting their physical capacities. Uh, if you're able to start picking techniques up more quickly, I think that's a really good sign that you are making progress. Uh, because I think of jiu-jitsu, of white belt, as being like the beginning of primary school where most people coming into primary school can't really read or write, can't really uh, do maths. And so they need to build those basic building blocks. They need to learn the alphabet, then learn how to form words, then how to form sentences, and then how to form paragraphs. 
uh, you're always building your vocabulary. And while you might be able to count a little bit when you start school, you don't necessarily know your times tables. You don't necessarily know how to do division or long division or, you know, you don't know how to do a lot of things with those numbers. So without those skills, it's very difficult to learn anything else. You know, you can't learn history if you can't read a history book. You can't understand a lot of science if you don't understand numbers. Uh, they're all, those are the, the, the kind of basic building blocks that make all the other learning possible. And so I think one of the great signs that you are making progress in jujitsu, and this is something that I have noticed very much in the last few weeks, and especially this week for a variety of reasons I don't really need to go into, um, but I think it's it's a, a great sign when your coach says, put your hand here, put your foot here, do this, do that, and you just grasp what he's trying to tell you quite quickly you understand how the move works you can feel you know well i oh, i understand why he wants my weight over here i understand why i need to put this this block here or this frame here that i think is is a better sign of progress and that is something that i think you will see a more sort of linear progress just a a, a smooth a smoother uh, increase in your ability. Uh, it's something that you might not always notice because uh, the the progress that you make is so slow and it can be, you know, two years or more for most people to get to blue belt level. I have been training for just over two years, so that is something that I'm now hoping is on my horizon. But Given that the last year and a bit, you know, the last maybe 16 months or so, uh, we haven't been training. The fact that I was able to come back and I was still able to pick those techniques up. It made me realize just how much I have advanced. Uh, I'm not as lost as I was uh, two and a half years ago when I first started training. Uh, sorry, th yeah, three years ago, three and a half years ago when I started training. Um, my, I'm, I'm not as lost as I once was. I do understand the language of the gym. I do understand some of the, the sort of underlying principles that are lie behind some of the techniques. And I think we can all learn something from that. I think we can all recognize our progress that way. Because even if you have disabilities, even if you are carrying a lot of injuries, that mental process, the, the, the mental part of jujitsu, should still be available to you. And in some ways, it's even more important. You have to think about doing things in the right way. You have to think about uh, protecting your own body. You have to think about... Uh, using your body in a way that's efficient and effective and isn't going to cause you further injury. Uh, it's something that, you know, if you come into the gym as an 18 or 19 year old and you're in peak physical condition, you might not need to think about those things so much. If you're somebody who's very strong, somebody who's, you know, maybe done a lot of weightlifting or something in the past, and just getting into jujitsu and you have incredible strength, then you might not necessarily think so much about the, the nuances of the technique. Uh, and you might not develop the, that mental side of the game quite so much, or at least not quite so quickly. You will definitely need to at some point, but it's not going to be your first priority. Whereas I think for people like me uh, and presumably a lot of the people watching this on YouTube, uh, people who have disabilities, people who are carrying injuries, people who are a bit older and just generally aren't as, uh, as fit and athletic as some of the younger people in the gym, that mental part of the game is the most important part. And I think that is somewhere where we can recognize progress 
And that progress is definitely something that we should celebrate. So that is just about all I have for you today. Um, I'd love it if you would uh, get down in the comments, let us know how you measure your progress, uh, how you talk to your coach about making progress, and whether you think my way of measuring uh, progress is a way that works. Please also do like the video if you enjoyed this. If you would like to see more, then subscribe to the channel. Uh, it would be great for, for you to do that. Uh, it will help me uh, in the algorithm with the algorithm. It will help uh, us generally to build a, a community here where we can all help each other to make progress through our jujitsu journeys. But that is absolutely all for today. So thanks once again for watching. Have fun at training and I'll see you next week.